Are you serious? Are you serious? Are we talking Planet X? Are we saying this is Nibiru? Are you saying this is Planet 7X? Is this Planet number 9? Well, where did it come from? Calm down. Get some coffee. Relax. Are you serious? Uh, What? Yes. Here's the refinings just breaking this morning. It's out there, folks. In the dark. Something 10 times more massive than Earth and at least 10 times further from the sun than Pluto. Still, it's within the solar system. If it's a planet, as gravitational evidence suggests, it just got even more mysterious. According to models run by the astronomers at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Aerophysics, several scenarios that could explain How it got there are still super unlikely. The evidence points to planet number nine, or Nibiru, existing. But we can't explain for certain how it was produced, said Zhangji Li, a lead author on a paper accepted for publication in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. The Earth is 93 million miles from the sun. Planet X, or planet 7X, planet number 9, is 200, excuse me, 64.4 billion miles from the sun. It's a strange place, folks, to find a planet, and that's for sure. Now, the big question is how it got there. Now, the uh, jungly... Lee and her colleague Fred Adams of the University of Michigan have modeled three different methods across millions of computer simulations. The first and most likely way Planet Nine got where it did is a passing star that affected Planet X's orbit, pulling it out of a closer position to the Sun and at the same time making its orbit more elliptical. However, this scenario has only a 10% chance of occurring. A passing star is far more likely to pull the planet out of its orbit completely and chuck it into space. Now, Gil Brazard would agree that this planet uh, 7X, he calls it, or planet number 9, has an a elliptical orbit. And so the, what scientists here are trying to do is, why? Well, let's move on. CFA astronomer Scott Kenyon and the University of Utah's Benjamin Bromley proposed in a second paper that instead of being pulled out by a star, planet X or Nibiru, planet number nine, formed much closer to the sun and was gradually shoved out by gas giants Jupiter and Saturn. Now, shining a kid, um, if you, if a kid was on a swing, if you give them a shove at the right time over and over, they will go further and further out. That's how Kenyon and Bromley are proposing that planet X or planet number nine form. It's amazing how NASA continues to keep changing the name on this massive body. The gravitational effects upon the Earth, the Sun, all of the planets, the moons, even spacecraft is quite evident. There's no question. Something deep, deep, deep into space is out there and it's pulling It's massive, it's powerful, and it's moving. It's on an orbit, but it's not the same orbital path that the Earth is on. And this may be why Gil Brazard says that about every 333 years, and that give or take, sometimes it's 319 years, sometimes 354 years, give or take, it's an elliptical orbit, this thing goes by our solar system close enough to affect and gravitational pull and create even some apocalyptic 
uh, scenarios of a biblical proportion. Matter of fact, he has documented he's documented 14 times in the Bible where like Joshua's longest day when the sun stayed up for 24 hours or Hezekiah's sundial that went back 10 degrees or fire and brimstone that fell on the enemies of Israel that were fighting Joshua or the sign of repentance of Nineveh by the prophet Jonah. And we could go on and on. Uh, that each time, the flood of Noah, each time this, this orbital object, planet 7X or planet number 9, went by a, a apocalyptic situation developed. And so now it's coming again. It is due. And the question is, what will it bring? What biblical manifestation will it bring this time? Well, when you study the Bible, the only really biblical event of a catastrophic, cataclysmic, chaotic situation would be Revelation 8, 8, and the two deep impacts that will hit the earth. Those are prophesied in your Bible in the book of Revelation. They have never happened yet. And, and John on the Isle of Patmos saw them in Revelation 8, 8. Matter of fact, what he saw was so disturbing that he wrote it this way in the Bible. In Revelation 8, verse 8, it says, And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning, with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. And a third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And a third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. Are you serious? And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And a third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now this is without question two deep impacts. One could be an asteroid. One could be a, a comet. Uh, either way, these were burning huge rocks that crashed into the earth and created a catastrophic, apocalyptic it's a scenario of biblical proportions. And it, then the next verse tells you that then a third part of the sun was smitten, third part of the moon, third part of the stars, so that the third part of them were darkened. So there's going to be a great smoke a great smoke rise from this impact, plus radiation, no doubt, turns the water bitter, so that would be radiation affecting the water, and about a third of the world's population will die in this catastrophic event, and it is in your Bible, it is prophesied to happen, and it's really the last major catastrophic event before the coming uh, of the wrath of God. Now, this is not the wrath of God as of yet. Uh, although some would say it is, and it sure sounds like it when it kills a third of the people. And let's assume it is part of the wrath. It doesn't kill all the people. The earth still suffers for some time. So having, having that, in, so in other words, if I wasn't saved, I'd be saying, dear Lord, have mercy. I don't want to be here when Nibiru arrives. And I don't, and see, here's the thing. It'll never hit the earth. But what Nibiru, and NASA gives it a lot of names, from Planet X to Nibiru, Gilbert calls it Planet 7X, and now scientists are calling it Planet Number 9. It's never going to hit the Earth, but it, what it brings with it, the asteroids, the Kuiper Belt seems to be filling with asteroids. We're seeing all kinds of asteroids and comets and meteorites going by the Earth and hitting the Earth. Meteorites are hitting now at a frequent pace. Fireballs seen in the sky all over the world now, and it will only increase. It's time to give your life to Jesus Christ because we're living in the last days. Are you saved? NASA keeps changing the names. 
but the result will still be the same. God is bringing judgment, doomsday, to the world. Are you saved? Jesus is the way.